Hey, this is Joe again with another movie review. <coughs> In this video, I'm going to be discussing the 1962 movie, The Music Man. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm Robert Preston and Shirley Jones. And of course, today I'm doing this video, it has to be July 4th, 2018, so it's Independence Day here in the United States, so we're going to be more appropriately discussing American movie uh, classic, American movie musical classic, uh, the mu like I said, The Music Man, and of course this movie takes place, came out in 1962, five years after its Broadway debut, which was in 1957, and the, the irony is that this movie swept, when it was nominated for the Tony Awards, it beat out West Side Story for just about everything, except for maybe the choreography. Um, except for maybe the choreography and possibly the music. The, the music man won everything else. That year when they were competing against West Side Story in, in the Tony Awards, when we came to the Academy Awards, it won practically nothing. It won for the musical score in the 1963 Oscars, but nothing else. It wasn't was hardly any nominated for anything. And, and Robert Preston, who played the original part on, on, the, on the Broadway version, but also in the film, he didn't even get nominated for an Oscar. I think he won, he, I think he won the Tony Award, but not the, uh, he wasn't even nominated for an Oscar that year. But, you know, on to the uh, film. The, f the film, of course, takes place in 1912, in, in, in 1912, Iowa, R R River City, Iowa, actually, is the name of the town. It's a fictional name for the town. And Robert Preston plays a a uh, con, pretty much a con man. And he plays a traveling salesman and he goes around actually traveling salesman at, at that time, like, like today, 20, there's no more traveling salesman today, but at that time was a, was a, the big thing is being traveling salesman, go town to town trying to sell people what you're selling. Most people are not interested, but how, but no president's character says Kind of a new persona, be, be Professor Henry Hill, who goes to, to small towns, small hick towns, and trying to con them into buying, into believing that he will create, or to hire him to create a boys' band for the town, and for them to, to spend money on uniforms, instruments, and, and, and everything. And as soon as he gets the money, of course, he would deliver on the instruments and stuff. But then whatever's left over, he will whatever money is left over and went out of the town. And kind and kind of everybody. So you see, no man. When you have the uniforms and you have the instruments, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna grab the money and run. And of course, that's basically, that's basically what the plot the plot is. And it's a two hour two and a half mo hour movie just just on that plot point. And he's trying to con, con this little small town. And he, he does it by saying, see, pool is bad. Because they had a new pool table. And everyone was fascinated with this new pool table in, in his pool hall. So, so uh, Henry Hill says, hey, let, let me go with good hook to, to get him to buy into the band. And that's what that's what exactly what he does. You got trouble. Wait here in River City. He goes into the whole song, song and dance act. And he convinces the town to to buy into the his idea of creating a band for the boys who were getting into trouble and stuff. And he makes a real big impact on the whole town. But except for the mayor was concerned, because the mayor thinks this guy is a con con man, which of course he is. He's always asking for help for his credentials. Look, if you want to work for the work on this band and create this band, we have to know. What your te teaching experience is? Do you have any credentials? Do you know you have a teaching license? Do you have this? And how the hell gets Hemming and Hoey comes up with another song and dance act to deflect you know, his ability of maybe gain gain the, the funds for playing this band. Well, that was going on. You know, he, from the president's character, Henry Hill falls in love with a local librarian who was played by Shirley Jones, and this is like the third big movie. Uh, musical film that Shirley Jones was in. She made her previously film debut in the film Oklahoma, 
the Wizard of the Hammersy musical film, and then she performed in Camus, uh, performed or appeared in Camusel, which is the second film. And so, since like a third, third film, she was like one of the hottest actresses at, at the time. I think nobody appeared more in movie musicals at that point in time than Shirley Jones. And this was before she was in uh, The Portrait Family, which of course most people know her from The Portrait Family. And it's my generation does. Nobody knows that back in the 50s and early 60s, she was the star in Broadway musicals. And at least musical films. Anyway. I don't know if she ever appeared in a Broadway musical, I have no idea. But she became famous for bringing this in these movies. And of course, she has a great singing voice. You know, you hardly really hear in the Partridge family, but she does have a great singing voice. Unfortunately, she doesn't perform. I don't think she performs anymore. I think she's retired now. But, but just seeing her in this movie, and she was kind of hot back then. And so, so to see her in this film, I think she did a great performance. She was skeptical at first about Harry Hill's intentions for the town, but then she slowly warms up to him and falls in, falls in love with the guy. And of course, Her Harry Hill came and developed a bond with Shirley Jones's young brother in the film, who was played by Ron Howard. Of course, at the time, he was starring in. Uh, the Andy Griffith show, and in this film he plays a kid with a, with a stuttering problem. I mean, without a stuttering problem, he had a lisp. He didn't. It wasn't a stuttering, he had a lisp, and so to, with it, trying to help him and help this kid, and and of course they find out eventually that Howard Hill is in fact a con man. He just wants to sell sell this stuff for the money. Uh, or to sell the town uh, to buy into this band and then count them out of the money. But then, because the reason how they found out was, I mean, there was always suspicions of Howard Hill's uh, character. And then they found out what was going on because another rival salesman, who was so anvils of all things, comes to the town and he was so mad because he was in the previous town where Howard Hill was in. And he conned the town, the previous town they were in. So he got mad and he happens to track down where Howard Hill was to, to River City. And he says, hey, this guy is, is conning you guys. He's, he's not about a stupid salesman like I am. And here's the proof. And he proves to the town this guy's a con man. So here comes, just like in the old Universal Horror films, he goes the guy with the pitchforks and the torches to hunt Howard Hill down. And they confront him about it, and he said, hey, is it true that you don't know anything about music? And of course he had to admit, yes, I don't know anything about music. He said, Did, you don't know anything about you know, leading, a, leading a marching band, leading, or, or leading a boys band? He said, no, I don't know anything about music. I just know how to sell the premise of forming a band and selling you guys to buy Instrument, musical instruments, and to buy, uh, you know, you know, band uniforms and stuff. And that's all I know how to do. I've been doing that for most of my life, and that's all I know how to do is to, is to sell you, uh, sell you on the premise of on, the, on these bands and stuff. And he said, at first, at first they, were, they were mad at him, they rightly so, and they were running, running him out of town, and then. Howard Hill says, look, if you allow me, I know you ma you mad at me and what he so, but if you allow me, you know, give me a chance, and Shirley Jones fought for him, and said, look, why don't, you, why don't we give him a chance and see if he can actually do the, he made his impact on several people who you could help, and let's see if he can do it for, for most of the kids in the town, and reluctantly, they gave him the chance, and of course, at the end of the film, he had the big scene, where you had, you know, the band marching up the street, Main Street in River City, Iowa. And that's how, you know, the movie ends. Um, but, but this, the problem that I have with this movie is that it, it is a critical success, especially at the time, 1962. It was one of the most greatest movie, uh, movie musicals of all time. It was one of the great Broadway shows of all time as well. But the problem is that it had, takes way too long 
to get there. And the show could have been done, but we, we cut 15 minutes, and they cut like 10 to 15 minutes out of this film. I feel a little bit better. Uh, because the problem is that a lot of these uh, musicals, these musicals that I've seen, they always have like this one big dance sequence. The problem with the music, man, is they have like three, about three, three or five dance sequences in this film. Which I feel it's way too much. If you, if you go about four or five four or five different dance sequences in, in one particular film, it's like you're pan, you're panning out the story. And it t and to and to me you, to me they were pan, panning it out. Um, you are putting in all these different dance sequences in there. Usually movie musicals you have maybe like one maybe one or two dance sequences, and that's it. No any movie. They had that many dance sequences in it. it. Was West Side Story? It worked in West Side Story because because just about everything worked in that in that film. And the Music Man doing all these dance sequences and it didn't exactly work. In, in, in my opinion, if you if you do like two, if you cut if you cut the dance sequence to maybe two or possibly even three, if you do it like three, you're stretching it. But if you have like about five different dance sequences, you're just panning out the story. And that's what they did with the music, man. They're panning it out with all these dance sequences in it. And you know, if you have the first dance sequence where Harold and Hill first coming to town, so you got trouble with the city sequence, that was good. And when you have the dance sequence at, at the, um, at, uh, the, what was it, ice, ice cream festival or something? That, that was a good sequence, uh, but you have so, way way too many, in my opinion, dance sequences. Uh, the one that I thought that was maybe, I don't mind if they had the, the musical scene or the song in the scene, but they had a sequence in the library where Howard Hill was trying was wooing or trying to seduce the Shirley uh, Jones character, and I thought that was totally unnecessary. You know, the dance sequence part of it. That that scene was was too padded out. And they had a dance sequence in the library. I thought that was a padded out sequence. It took too long. And there was other sequences that I also felt took way too long. Including including the <coughs> including the sequence where they had at the where they found out that Helen Hill was a con man and they had a little dance at the um, in the park. That with, with Buddy Hackett, there was also too too well uh, too drawn out. There was like two dance sequences with, with um, Buddy Hackett. One in the, in the stable, in the horses, and this one. And I thought it was like too padded out. It was too padded out for the story, and to make it to stretch to stretch it out. I mean, it's just way too long, and, and way too many dance sequences in this film. I mean, I've seen dance sequences in, in films like um, like Oklahoma. You have maybe like two dance sequences in there that, that, that you can remember. Um, that, that was fine, but it was two. I mean, two dance sequences is enough. Maybe three tops. And this might have about maybe about five or six different dance sequences, and it was way too many, way too padded out. But as a film, it is. I mean, it is a good story. It is a, a musical comedy, but I felt there was too too many dance sequences to pad out the story more. And when you have that many dance, if you have about that many, if you have about, I think I think roughly about five six dance sequences, it's just too much. Even I don't think even West Side Story had that many dance sequences in it. Yeah, uh, I know I'm comparing the West Side Story because it came out the same year in you know for the Tonys, nineteen fifty seven. When you had a dance in the gym, you had the dance on the roof, you know, with the sharks, you had the da dancing with, with um, the jets in the, in the garage with the cool sequence. That's three. There's, th there's three sequences, uh, 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 there's three dance sequences. Uh, but if you have double that of West Side Story, you're just paying up, you're just paying it out. But that's my only real big criticism is that too many dance sequences. That's, that's my only real criticism of it. If they cut down all, 
took about three dance sequences that would be 15 minutes shorter. But the performances were top-notch performances, even from Bunny Hackett, you know, who's known for who's known for his comedy, stand-up comedy routines, and being in some some uh, on the beach films. He he was good. I mean, all the performances here were top-notch uh, performances in this film. And I said. So I'm not criticizing the performances, I'm just criticizing too many dance sequences in it. Uh, but other than that, I do recommend The Music Man. It's like one of those movies you can see once or twice. Uh, especially if you haven't been a fan of, of, mu of musical films, do check it out. So that means film, that's my review of the film Music Man. Please check out the video, please rate it, feel free to comment on it. Please subscribe to my channel, please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can check out all my reviews and on my YouTube channel. At rallyc.com, that's on WDY, and at c.com, that's the homepage in Rally Reviewer. Chris Lee Moore, please check out all of his videos on his website as well. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time.